Hi, JJ here again with The Art of Value. Welcome. Well, investor Michael Barry of Big Short fame recently tweeted, I was wrong to say sell. After previously tweeting sell, just one word sell, back in the 1st of February. So he's flipped. Does this mean there's a new bull market? I'll be discussing that, investigating that, what he thinks, why he thinks it in this video. Does it mean there's a new bull market going on? Let's take a look at what the market indices have done this year to see if there's a new bull market, what he's talking about, and what's happened since he first tweeted sell back on the 1st of February. If we look at the S&P 500, we can see that year to date, it's up 7.46%, which is pretty good. And back in early February, it kind of went down for quite a long time. Look at that, since, the, since really early February, it went down to early March, and then it's kind of been rocketing up since then. But if we look at the NASDAQ 100, we can see there's a different story. It's 21.35% up, which is very good. It's a very good year so far for the NASDAQ. So it's quite a different story there. That's technically a bull market over 20% rise, but there can be during bear markets these big bear market rallies, as much as 50% in fact in the past history. So 20% isn't really an indication of a bull market just yet, even though technically it is. And the Russell 2000 is up 2.96%. So they're smaller stocks, smaller 2000. So it's not doing too well compared to the NASDAQ. So since the beginning of February, it has been going down and it sort of picked up a little bit lately, but not as much as the NASDAQ or even the S&P 500. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which isn't really the benchmark these days, the S&P 500s for fund managers say is really the benchmark, but it's up just 0.42%. So that's a small snapshot in time, just year to date. But if we go back further, if we look at five years, which is kind of more interesting, we can see a different kind of picture that the S&P 500 is, you can see going back that long bull market that it had, and then it's gone down since late 2021, and it's kind of leveling out. If you looked at that, you wouldn't really call it a bull market yet. It looks like it's bottom, but it could always go down. We can't predict it. If somebody tells you that they can predict what the share market's gonna do in the short term or even medium term, they're either lying to you or delusional. If people could predict the stock market, there'll be a lot more wealthier people, but nobody can really do it over the short term. Not even Michael Burry. If you're getting value out of this episode so far, please remember to like on YouTube or Rumble. And if you're not subscribed already, maybe consider subscribing. I'm heading towards that thousand subscribers on YouTube. Really keen to get there soon. So you would help me out if you did that. And I'll try and give you as much value as I can in the videos coming up. Thanks. So if we look at the NASDAQ 100, we can see over the past five years, it's similar. It's had a big, long bull run and then went down, of course, since late 2021. And it does look like it's turning up strongly after that trough, but we just don't know. This is the current Schiller PE ratio, which is standing at 29.35. This was yesterday. These were all from yesterday. So 29.35 is pretty high historically. If you don't know what the Schiller PE ratio is, do look it up on Investopedia. It's pretty interesting and it gives you a benchmark of what's been happening throughout history. You can see there are pivotal points in history, Black Tuesday, Black Monday, back in uh, 1987, and that huge run up to 2000, and then the huge drop off. That's as high as it ever got, which was nearly 45, I think. 44.19 it was, and the the minimum was 4.78, and the historical mean is 17, and the medium 15.91. So it's pretty high above that, suggesting that the market is still fairly expensive, but it's only just one indicator, one metric. A lot of people are saying they don't put much stock in this particular metric, but I find it interesting to look at just as an overall benchmark, because it's been, it has been pretty accurate when you look at the, the bubbles that it's been, and it has come down. It got way over 35, almost to 40 way back in that kind of emerging tech bubble, the bubble we had in 2020, 2021, but it's come down to under 30, which is still pretty high. The market has been pretty mixed through the different indices and the Schiller PE is still pretty high. So is it another bull market? Have we had a big trough and it's a bull market? I couldn't say that. I couldn't say that myself, but nobody can predict it. Economic conditions play a factor in it, of course, and a lot of people have been, the market's been anticipating a recession for quite some time. There are different metrics that, we, that we've had that have been good, some bad. Company earnings haven't been as good as they, as they were, and also the Fed. Just in the last few weeks, we've had that banking panic. Silicon Valley Bank pretty much collapsed. It did collapse in a bank run, so 
people have been pretty nervous and panicked since then. So is Mar- Michael Burry taking that into account? Is he thinking that that this is a bottom because that is the worst it's going to get and it's a going to be a bull market from here? Who's to say? But the banking panic could spread. I've made a few previous videos about that banking panic as it played out in the US and regional banks and people worried about it. And the Fed came in and backstopped depositors pretty much for for all of those regional banks and probably even if it went further backstopped all depositors i would say it seemed like they were indicating that so are these economic conditions does this backdrop really say that a bull market is underway another thing that we've seen of course is higher inflation and higher interest rates to try and get that inflation down so is this the kind of environment that would see a bull market is michael burry saying that is he saying he's he flipped and saying this could be the bottom because of those things this is as bad as it's gonna get when he says i was wrong to sell to say sell does he mean buy or does he just mean hold if we look at his own portfolio it'd be interesting to see the next 13 f filings in in this quarter that's just been but if we look at his last quarter the fourth quarter of last year which was before he said sell it was interesting to see what he was doing because he has been pretty pessimistic about economic conditions so what did he do in those conditions i've made a previous video about the quarter before that when he was buying private prisons and communications companies which he's actually sold so let's take a look at his portfolio just from that last quarter activity and see what he's been doing okay looking at data roma these are his holdings the u.s holdings we don't know if he has any overseas but there are some overseas here actually we can see a mixed bag of companies that he owns black knight coherent corp alibaba holdings from china and jd so he bought chinese companies maybe he says the bottom of the china stocks china economy as well they could be considered value stocks he is a value investor in the ben graham style he kind of looks for really cheap stocks quite often as well as being known for shorting he does look for really deep value stocks he was in gamestop before it became a meme stock bought it really cheap you can see that in his filings and then he sold before it became a meme stock so he got it he thought it was undervalued and then he sold it when it he thought it came to fair value which is incidentally a lot cheaper than it even is now so he bought seven companies in the quarter so he's not he wasn't completely bearish back then sometimes what he says on twitter is not actually what he does in the filings he might say that he's bearish but he's still buying stuff like i said he bought private prisons when he thought the economy was going to be bad maybe more people in prison that sort of thing sky west incorporated which is actually a regional airline holding company based in the united states company operates flights on behalf of major airlines remember this was back in the in the fourth quarter of 2022 so he wasn't completely pessimistic and he did sell those stocks that i mentioned geo group curate retail core civic aerojet rocket dine holdings which is aerospace charter communications media liberty he had three john malone related stocks which i made a video about he seems to have got rid of a whole set of stocks and bought some more not necessarily a trader as i said sometimes value investors sell when it comes up to fair value or when they're wrong and sell either way sell when it's fair value they don't wait for it to compound over time and as we saw in the big short he's also shorting things which we can't see from this filing he may have been doing that when he said sell he might have been shorting things so as i said i think it's going to be pretty interesting to see his next filings after that lot after in the first of february saying sell and then just recently he was wrong to say sell so what were the movements in his portfolio during the quarter it's going to be interesting to see where he sits at the end of this first quarter of 2023 so i think it's worth asking we need to ask what's with the rally what's with this nasdaq rally that's over 20 percent now the s p 500 up a little bit other indices not so much but what's going on here if economic conditions aren't so great with that back bank panic with that possible bank crisis and the fed with emergency measures stepping into backstop depositors people were worried about that so what's going on I think it's a sentiment rally is it a sentiment rally if these economic conditions aren't so great and why is sentiment so good it seems to have been if we say it's for tech stocks emerging tech stocks if we look at tesla and a lot of stocks that went down 60 70 80 90 percent do investors think it couldn't get any worse because people were throwing the baby out with the bath water some of them haven't recovered but some of them have recovered a lot over 50 percent but sentiment 
is it worth it? Does it mean this is a bear market rally? And so when economic indicators come out, when metrics come out that aren't so good, are we going to go down again? We just don't know. I wouldn't predict it. I can't predict it. I don't think Michael Burry can predict it. And I wouldn't listen to anybody who say they definitely know what's going to happen. But this could be a bear market rally. We just don't know. And of course, Michael Burry himself, in case people thought he was being too bullish, came out on the 30th of March with this tweet saying, go back to the 1920s. There has been no BTFD generation like you. That's by the effing dip, of course. Congratulations, he says. A bit sarcastic. And there's this graph saying bargain hunting is alive. 2023 is shaping up to be the second best year for buying the dip strategy. S&P 500's average return following down days by year. So we can see there that buying the dip is still happening. Is it because there are a lot of retail investors in the market still and that's what's worked since the really the financial crisis, the global financial crisis? Buying the dip during that long bull run for tech stocks in particular, are people still doing that? Which could mean there's still a big cleaning out to do, the final washout, a bull trap. This could be a bull trap rally, we just don't know. Or is it people just buying good stocks and holding for the long term? But Michael Burry, typically contradictory when people thought that, that he's saying there's a new bull market comes in and saying buying you're still buying the dip so maybe it's not over. Is he saying that there's a lot of speculation still in the market or some speculation and it hasn't been wrung out? He could be saying that there's still more to come because typically when you have a really the end of a bull market and it got pretty crazy remember the SPACs remember the meme stocks some of the stuff still going on has it all been wrung out or there's still speculation because typically people do get caught saying rushing back in or it's happened after the 2000 bubble it took a long time a couple of years to wind down you could say that since the beginning of since February 2021 those emerging stocks like ARK emerging tech stocks have been pretty much down for quite a long time now so how long will the bear market go on for or is there more to come he seems to be suggesting that because buying the effing dip is still going on then there's more to come and there'll be a wash out a further wash out and that is quite possible I think that's quite possible as I said this bear market the the rally the bear market rally, if it is that, isn't huge yet. There have been much bigger ones. Catch people out until until all of the speculation has been completely wrung out. People are d kind of destroyed and they're just sick of the stock market and a lot of retail investors leave. Is that going to happen or are we actually in a new paradigm because of social media, because of app apps like Robinhood where a lot of retail people are in the market and they won't be leaving? So has it changed? People have often thought that before, but is that true this time? So what are we to do as investors? I'm not giving any financial advice whatsoever. I can just tell you what I'm doing, but I have not sold. I wouldn't be swayed by Michael Burrow saying sell back when he did. I, I know that some people were that follow him closely because it was pretty emphatic sell. And so I would never follow an investor or a fund manager like that in terms of predicting the market. But I think for, for me, what to do is just to buy and hold, like a, the Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger type strategy. Buy good companies, don't pay too much, don't overpay, and just hold. Then do nothing and don't be scared out of the market. But also cash is not a bad option, it's looking like, isn't it? With interest rates going up, cash suddenly after years and years of being pretty bad is not a bad option. And I use Interactive Brokers. There's a link down in the description for a referral link to Interactive Brokers. So keeping cash in there, not, I mean, I buy stocks and sell stocks through there, but having cash in an account like that that's gaining interest is turning into not a bad option. Again, not investment advice, just telling you what I'm doing. But there is a, a link there to Interactive Brokers if you want to check that out. This upward climb of interest rates have turned into cash being not so bad. Remember when Ray Dalio said cash is trash? He's not saying that anymore because things, the situation has changed. But buying good stocks, good companies, stocks in good companies for the long term is always a good strategy, I think, in my opinion. So I agree with Michael Burry this time in that he said I was wrong to say sell. If I've made a mistake, I definitely sell. If it becomes obvious, there's no point holding on to it. But holding for the long term, finding those compounders that are going to compound for a long time, 10x or more, 
made a video about 100 baggers that is the ultimate goal but very hard to find and very rare so what do you think was michael burry wrong was he wrong the first time to say sell is he being wrong again to say he was wrong to sell do you think we're at the start of another bull market or not or is there more bad times to come let me know in the comments if you got this far in the video and you got value out of it consider subscribing on youtube on rumble on spotify or on your favorite podcast app and i'll see you again thanks for listening or watching